When you use Excel, it's important to use formulas and functions correctly. In this video, I'm going to cover common functions that you're going to need. It's great if you're an Excel beginner or if you generally aren't comfortable using functions in Excel. I'll show you a trick that makes it easier to use any type of function. Let's get to it. We're going to be using the sample data set to practice on. We have name, department and salary. Now in Excel, when you want to type in a formula, you start with the equal sign. Then using your mouse or the arrow keys, you can move over to the cell you want to select. So let's say I just want to add two numbers. I'm going to select a cell, type in a plus sign. Then with my arrow keys on the keyboard, go and select another cell. And then when I'm done, I can press enter. Now you can use the typical mathematical operations that you're used to. So here I could go ahead and add a minus and then go and select the cell. And when I press enter, I get the final result. And all of this is dynamic. So if something changes here, my result is going to update automatically. I'm just going to press control Z to undo this. Now, in addition to plus and minus, you can also divide and multiply. So let's say I want to remove this part of the formula and then I just want to divide this cell with the other cell. Type in a slash and press enter. To multiply two values together, you have to use the asterisk sign. Now you can also use brackets. So let's put these inside brackets and then let's divide the results with, let's say this number and press enter. Okay, so your typical mathematical operations work in Excel formulas as well. But if you wanted to add all of these numbers here, you don't want to go in and do a plus for each number. This is where Excel functions come into play. So there are pre-programmed functions that do the plus for you. So for example, if I want to add all these salaries together, I can use the sum function. So just start typing sum and you can see the list of functions popping up here. You can select it with your mouse or you can use the tab key to select the first one. And then here you can add different cells, but in this case, we don't want to do different cells. We want the entire range. So with your mouse, you can select this. You can also go with the arrow keys and hold down the shift key and select this range. And then you close the bracket. And when you press enter, you have the sum of this entire range. So functions in Excel are programmed machines that do a certain task. The sum function sums up different values. Then we have the count function, which is going to count different values. Now we're going to see this in a second, but I want to show you one thing before we get there. How do you know what a function is called? If I'm new to Excel, I'm not going to know about this function. I might be typing in add and there is no add function. You can get help from the formulas tab. Now talking about being new to Excel, if you're also new to this channel, welcome and consider subscribing so you can find these tutorials easier. So under formulas tab, you have insert function. This is something you can use to find a specific function. So let's say I want to add values. I'm going to press enter and I get suggestions here. And when I click on them, I can read about this function. I see the sum function here. It adds all the numbers in a range of cells. Now we're going to get back to insert function in a second. I'll just press cancel on this now. Let me show you another way of summing values and that's using auto sum. When you click on this drop down, you have the option to select the type of function you want. So in this case, we want to sum. So I'm just going to select this and it does the whole work for me. All I have to do is check whether the range it selected is what I want. In this case, it is. So all I need to do is press enter. Now there is also a shortcut key for this. You might have caught it when I clicked on auto sum. It's alt and the equal sign. So when you're here, just type in alt and equal, press enter, and you have your sum. Now this also works horizontally. So if I have a number here, I can go and do alt equals and it picks up the correct range. And all I have to do is press enter. Because summing values or getting the average of values is such a common task, you don't just find it under the formulas tab here. You have auto sum available in the home tab. So directly from here, 
on the editing side, you have AutoSum and you can select the function that you need. So now let's take a look at getting the average of our values. Now on the side here, I'm just going to type in sum so we know what each function represents. Let's get the average here. And now again, I can start by either typing in the function directly and then selecting it with tab, highlighting my range, closing the bracket and pressing enter, or I just go to the auto sum options here and select average. But now take a look at this. It picked up this value as well. So I need to correct this. So instead of C11, I want C10. I'm going to press enter. Next, let's count numbers. So I'm going to type in count. On the side here, I get some information about what this function does. So it counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. That's what I want. So I'm going to open the bracket or press tab and it opens the bracket for you. Then select this range, close bracket, press enter. And that's the count of cells that have numbers. So if one salary information is missing, my count is going to be reduced. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z to go back. Now just to know what we're doing, this was count salary. Can I use this to count names? Well, let's try it. I'm going to use the count function. This time I'm going to press tab. Let's select this, close bracket, press enter, and I get zero. So the count function only counts numbers. It doesn't count text. If you want to count text, you need to use a different function, and that's the count a function. This function counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So it doesn't care whether it's text or it's a number. It counts both of them. Now I'm going to press enter and I get eight. So if one of these happens to be a number, I'm going to put a zero, it's going to count it. It only doesn't count it if it's empty. Um, just press Ctrl Z a few times to go back. Another two super useful functions are the min and the max functions. So let's say I want to get the minimum salary in the range. I need the min function, select the range, close bracket, press enter, and it's going to give me the smallest number in that range. In a similar way, we can get the maximum salary from this range. Close bracket, press enter, and that's our number. Now, what if you wanted to do something more complex, like getting the average salary of people who are in the sales department? How would you go about this? Well, we can start off by typing in average to see the different options we have. And then we can check this description to see if it does what we want it to do. So here we have average if which looks good because it takes into account a given condition. And we have something called average if s, which is a given set of conditions. So we can include more than one condition in this formula. Now let's say I'm interested in this because I might add in other columns here and I might want to have different conditions. So I'm going to double click this or you can press tab. And then let's go to the formula bar and see what we need. It says we need average range criteria range one, criteria one. Now all of this doesn't really mean much to me if I'm new to Excel. So here's what you can do. Click on this button. That's the insert function button. And it takes you to this dialog box, which gives you a bit more information. So for average range here, this is the actual cells to be used to find the average. So this means these are my number cells. That's the range I need to select. I can get a preview of what I selected right here. Then what does criteria range one mean? This is the range of cells you want evaluated for the particular condition. That's my range. Next criteria one, this is the condition or criteria in the form of a number, expression, or text that defines which cells will be used to find the average. So that's sales. Now I can do a cell reference here if I had sales sitting in a separate cell here, or I can just directly type it in. Now notice something, the moment I click away, it's going to put my text in quotation marks because if you're using text inside a formula, you need to put quotation marks. Now take a look at this. I already see the answer here. So I have a good idea that my function is working properly. 
and then all I have to do is press on OK and the function is inserted here. OK, so this is a great feature to use when you're new to Excel and don't really understand what Excel wants from you for each of these different requirements. So that ends our introduction to Excel formulas and functions. I have many videos on the channel covering different functions in Excel, so make sure you check them out if you ever need to write more complex functions to get your analysis done. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and do consider subscribing if you aren't a subscriber. It would be great to have you as a part of our community. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.